I am Fortinbras. I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars, start from their spheres, thy nodded and combined locks to part, and each particular hair to stand on end, like quills upon the fretful porpentine. Listen, listen, oh listen. Here is Principal Hamlet of the prestigious Denmark High School with his vice principal Gertrude. Principal Hamlet is working on a paper to complete his PhD. Hey Gertrude, yeah, I can't get a hold of Professor Polonius. Can you, um, can you call him to come over here and help me out? Thanks. But what is this? A serpent? This will work. I gotta take the limit as that so approaches A. I jumped this continuity. A few months have passed since the death of Principal Hamlet. Dr. Claudius has taken over his position as principal. Mr. Hamlet, Dr. Hamlet's son, is a calculus teacher at Denmark High. Whither wilt thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. Follow me. I will. I am thy father's spirit. Oh, Rima. Revenge is foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? No, thou noble youth, the serpent that did stink thy father's life, now holds his position. Oh, my prophetic soul, that beast! I, that principal Claudius, upon my research, thy new principal stole, and with ink from his red marker. On um, the whiteness of my board, he did mark. Mark, I jumped his continuity, whose effect holds such an enmity with the act of differentiation that swift as quicksilver, it courses through the limit process, and with a sudden vigor, doth mark the limit, does not exist. My bones, stricken by the discontinuity, did grow weary, and then would my feeble heart fail under stress. Thus was I, sleeping by a doctor's hand. I do, I do. Remember thee, I, thou poor, thou poor ghost that holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee, yes, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial theorems, all statistical facts, and all geometric postulates. And thy commandment shall live all alone within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Now to my word, it is a do a do. Remember me that I have swamped. Uncertain whether or not to act, Mr. Hamlet spends his time agonizing over the problem of his dead father, the ghost's words, and Principal Claudius's potential treachery. Nevertheless, he still must teach his classes. Good morning, students. To derive or not to derive, that is the question. Whether it is noble in the mind, to, saw, to differentiate the slings and arrows of calculus, or to take pencils against a sea of problems, and by opposing, solve them. To apply L'Hopital's rule, to solve the limit, no more. And by solve the limit, we say we end the headache and the thousand issues that instantaneous change is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to derive or not to derive. Class is dismissed, you may leave. Mr. Hamlet, I have a calculator of yours that I have longed to re-deliver. I pray you now receive it. No, not I. I never gave you up. Mr. Hamlet, you know right well you did, right before the test, and with them words of encouragement that motivated me all the more. Take this again, for the mind's memory waxes, old, waxes poor with old age. 
Are you continuous, sir? Are you differentiable? What is the meaning of these words? That if you be differentiable and continuous, your, uh, your function should admit no discontinuities to your limit. Could my limits have better commerce than with discontinuity? I did teach you once. I do believe you did once upon a time. You should have properly learned from me. If you cannot be properly taught, you learned not. I tried to learn from you, Mr. Hamlet. Get thee to a university. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of inconsistency in your mathematics? Go thy ways to an, a new university. Where, where is your father? He's at home, sir. Ah, let the school doors be open to him, that he may have a meeting with myself this Saturday. Farewell. Oh, help me, O Riemann. After that fateful day, to the university she went, and within two eventful months, amidst tuition fees and loans, she died of starvation. Professor Laertes, Ophelia's older brother, whose love for Ophelia was greater than that of 40,000 brothers, vowed revenge against the man who resulted in Ophelia's death, but didn't yet know his identity. Meanwhile, in order to confirm the ghost's story, Mr. Hamlet creates a drama club and puts on a self-written play for the school staff and Principal Claudius, hoping to catch a glimpse of his guilt. Okay class, welcome to the drama club. So, we're actually going to put on a play that's based off of, I would say, a sort of real life event that I thoroughly enjoy. And we're going to call it The Mousetrap. How fair is our instructor, Hamlet? Excellent in that faith. May you have a seat. Enjoy this play. These equations make no sense, Baptista. What is going on? Could you bring Professor Lear? I would like to consult with him. We'll call you this play. Mousetrap. In this part right here, Principal Gonzago doesn't know Lopitano's rule and is unable to take the limit. What say you? How foolish of him. Not knowing of such an elementary rule. Discontinuity! However will I find the instantaneous rate of change. Ah! That was Lucky Lucianus. He put a removable discontinuity in the principal's graph. And usurps his position. Unable to find the culprit, Laertes approaches the principal to determine who suggested college courses to Ophelia, resulting in her starvation. Principal, give me my sister. What is the cause, Professor Laertes, that thy request looks so giant-like? Tell me, Laertes, why thou art thus incensed. What has happened to my sister? Dead. Slain by tuition fees. By whose suggestion? I'll not be juggled with. Teachers Association, payroll? To the blackest devil, conscience and grace. To the profoundest pit, I dare to be fired. To this point I stand. To my classes and lectures I give negligence. Let come what comes, only I'll be revenged for, most thoroughly for my sister. Who shall stay you? My will, not all the world. Good Professor Laertes, if you desire to know the certainty of your dear sister, is it writ in your revenge, that swoopstake you will draw both friend and foe, colleague and student? None but my enemies. Well, you know them then. I am guiltless of the suggestion that ended your sister's life, and I am most sensibly in grief for it. It shall to your judgment pair as does to your eye. The one who gave the fatal suggestion to Ophelia was none other than Mr. Hamlet himself. The fiend that he had something to do with this effect. Is it true? I, should you wish, the cameras shall reveal. But to this day, trust in my word. I shall, and I shall not cease my pursuit until revenge most sweet and succulent be reached, that it be suitable as the final meal that the fair Ophelia did not have. In good conscience. Ah, yes, but how? A test, a test suitable for that fiend Hamlet does have in the same rigor that Ophelia did experience in her last dying days. A fine suggestion. I shall proctor the test. Professor Laertes challenged Mr. Hamlet to the test, and a wager was made. The wager claimed that if Mr. Hamlet was outdone by Professor Laertes in the test, he would have to give up his position as the Calculus BC teacher, and Professor Laertes would take over it. If he were to outdo Professor Laertes, Laertes would leave him and go his separate way, but Laertes didn't intend to allow that to pass. 
Give me your pardon, sir. I've done you wrong. I do receive your offered apology, and I won't wrong it. I embrace it freely. And with this colleague's exam, frankly, test, you, may you give us the pencils? Come on. One for you, <laughs> one for you. Thank you. I'll be your foil, Laertes, and my own ignorance, your intellect shall, like a star in the darkest night, stick fury off indeed. You mock me, you imbecile. Yeah, I'm much offended, Laertes. Here are the tests. Hamlet, you know the wager. If you are outdone, you will renounce your position, and Laertes will take your place. If you shall outdo, Laertes will quietly leave. Very well, Principal. You have the odds on the weaker side. I do not fear it. I have seen you both. But since he is better, we have therefore odds. This pencil is too heavy. Let me see another. This, li this likes me well. Have you, these pencils all have a length? Aye. Give me the stoops of cola upon the table. If Hamlet completes the first or second equation, or quit in answer of the third equation, let all calculations by their hands be complete. I shall drink to Hamlet's better intellect, and in the cup a Toblerone shall be thrown, milkier than that which four successive principles in Denmark's high office have ever eaten. Come on, sir. Let's begin. One. No. J judgment? A very palpable solution. Let's continue. Hamlet, that Toblerone is thine. Here is to thy help. Bring him the cup. I'll drink it later. Go, go for instance, set about to finish these equations. Another. What are you doing? Principle, judgment. The test is moot. We shall relocate and start anew. Welcome to my abode, gentlemen. We will continue the test here. Hamlet will win. He is stupid and does not know mathematics. Here, Hamlet. Let me help you out. Sharpen thy pencil. I shall finish this equation to help you out. Thank you, Vice Principal. Gertrude, do not assist him. I will, Principal Claudius. I pray you allow me. It is a discontinuous function. It is too late. Principal Claudius, we shall continue the exam now. Yet it is almost against my conscience. Come again for the third, Lertes. I'll have at the page. <coughs> time, time, put down your pencils. The job is continuity. I am justly killed with mine own treachery. Uh, uh, how, does the how does the vice principal? She swoons to see them get failing <coughs> scores. No, no, the problem, the problem. Oh, Mr. Hamlet, the problem, the problem. Tis a jump discontinuity. Oh, villainy, ho, Miss Hamlet, who wrote these? It is here, Mr. Hamlet. Mr. Hamlet, thou art slain. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and irrational. The foul problem hath turned itself on me. Lo, here I lie, never to teach again. Thy boss is poison that can do no more. The proctor, the principal's to blame. Polarities. The discontinuity's a jump as well. Oh, the problem to thy work! No. <laughs> no! Solve the Hamlet. problem! I think jump is continuity! Ill the limit cannot be evaluated! Conniving, ill paying principle! Solve the problem! He is justly served. It was a problem written by himself. I forgive you, Mr. Hamlet. You could not have known of my sister's fate. I am slain. Heaven make thee free of it. I follow thee. I am dead. Wretched vice principal. Adieu. What visitor like noise is this? It is I, young Dr. Fortinbras, with a request to take my property from my former office, now vacant and without professor. Dr. Fortinbras, my former colleague and a fine teacher laid out for a cool and unusual punishment against students. I am slain now by this problem with imperceivable solution. But Mr. Hamlet, the solution is- Listen now to my tale and interrupt not. For my time is short. But Mr. Hamlet. Such is my tale. Remember me and apply for the principal position. For this fair school, ravaged by the plot of men, must have a leader. I am now dead. Oh. Good Mr. Hamlet, I shall remember. And though I have been laid off of my teaching position, 
I shall apply to be principal instead. But alas, if you had merely used L'Hopital's rule, you would have been saved. Note that if you merely take the derivative of the numerator f of x and the denominator g of x, it shall be equal to the quotient f of x over g of x. Such process may be repeated for infinite repetitions until the indeterminate is removed and the limit may be evaluated. Such is L'Hopital's rule.